Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the community life cycle. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is basically because you are all representing a very wide range of, um, you know, how many, what we base probably how many members are in your community um, in terms of also, you know, the activity that's going on in there. So I just kind of wanted to acknowledge, you know, every single stage that all of you could be in. Kind of talk about what those different stages mean and what you can do next, even if you are a very, uh, you know, maturely developed community. This is what, you know, I've kind of developed as the community life cycle. Uh, I consider it to be pretty much four stages. So, obviously, the first stage is getting started, you know, starting from the ground, getting people, you know, interested in what this is and talking to each other. Um, the next stage is when you become more established. People know who you are and what the community is doing for you and your organization and for them. Then you get into more of the mature stage. Um, and then there's actually the post-mature stage. So it's basically acknowledging that even if you are you know, a developed community with thousands of members, there still are things that you can do after that point. Um, another important thing to acknowledge is that obviously you're depending on you know the charity that you are and the conditions that you're representing. Obviously, your reach is very very different. So the BLF, you know, you guys obviously can reach you know millions of people maybe, and you know obviously some kind of rare condition you can't. So your mature stage could be quite different from each other. That's another important thing to remember. The getting started stage. Um, basically, what's involved in this is, you know, the fostering of the individual relationships. Getting a community started is the part that you probably have to be the most involved in in terms of, you know, really trying to get on a one-to-one -one basis with all of the people that are joining and, you know, that, that definitely takes, I would say, a lot of your time. Um, in terms of you're probably going to want to initiate discussion, post some blogs, you know, really have that really pushing out that information so that people can understand why am I here and what am I supposed to do here because it might be surprising but if some people come to an empty on health unlocked community, you know, they, they might not know what they're even supposed to do. What kind of question are they supposed to ask? What, what's a blog? What are they supposed to write here? Um, so that can definitely confuse people a little bit. Um, your focus is obviously on trying to reach a critical mass so that you can move into that next stage where people are kind of fostering their own conversations and you don't need to have <coughs> that. Um, and so there, another thing to acknowledge is that there is quite a low sense of community at this time. Now, most of you are obviously past this stage, so what I'm saying is probably stuff that you can just identify with. Next stage, uh, we call established. So. What is a good idea to do once you start getting into the more established stage and you're not spending so much time trying to initiate conversation and kind of make people feel comfortable with each other um, is, you know, you could even try, which I'm sure a lot of you already do, but, you know, even just recruiting volunteers. Sometimes that comes, you know, you could have volunteers that are for your charity itself, but what others... Uh, communities do is they basically recruit volunteers from people who have become quite active in the community and seem like they're a trusted individual, likable, you know, they, ha they share some pretty good health information and creating, you can just approach them and say, you know, you're very active on this community, would you mind helping us out a little bit, keeping an eye on the day-to-day -day things if they're kind of here already. What other communities do also is they, they start to kind of establish some of their own guidelines because we try to have some very encompassing guidelines that you know are for the whole site, but you could have some particular things that you want to add to those guidelines, which is something you're more than welcome to do. So I consider this stage, um, you know, the sense of community, it is developing or already developed. Um, so the next stage is mature. Uh, this is when you really can take a m much more hands-off approach in terms of the day-to-day -day conversation and what's going on. However, you know, like I said again, d disputes can increase a bit, and so you know, obviously, gotta keep an eye on that. Um, 
What I believe important in this stage is really trying to get a sense of voice from this community of people that you have, which could be you know 500 to 1,000 or more people. So what I think the poll question is, you know, and changing it fairly often, maybe every couple of weeks, is a really good way to understand you know, what these people want from the community, what they think about certain things, um, and just kind of having that statistical information that you can even share in your own reports as a charity or something like that. Um, so there's quite a strong sense of community and um, yeah, so, but then, so what happens once you reach that mature stage is you can get into the post-mature stage. So it can become tough to manage, especially for people who are new and coming to the community and seeing, like we mentioned before, these relationships that have already formed and, you know, sometimes it's hard to control what goes on there. Um, so what, what we've what we realized will be very, very helpful is creating basically subgroups. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about um, with, with what categories will do. Because we don't wanna tell people, oh, you know, you're not here to talk about this or that or make a joke or something like that. We don't, you know, it is a community. We want people to be able to talk and, you know, make jokes and stuff. So um, the categories will really help to kind of sort information and let people go where they want to go and if they want to skip over those jokes they can do that but if they want to join in that they can do that as well and so i think that that will definitely have a huge impact in you know how new people are welcomed and how the old people are doing things